Greetings, respective viewers. I'm George from Ireland, and I'm on Cato Street in London. This was the site of the Cato Street conspiracy. Um, so perhaps an apposite name for such, such a street after the, the um, uh, Roman statesman who was involved in so many uh, political controversies. Though um, his uh, political outlook wasn't quite the same as um, the plotters here. So um, it was in 1820, it was the year after the Peterloo massacre. You may know in St. Peter's Field in Manchester, a magistrate had said to the, to the um, yeomanry, as in these um, middle-class part-time soldiers on horseback, clear that crowd, and they did, killing about a dozen people in the, protests, in the process with uh, sabre strokes and injuring many more. But anyway, it was a time of um, radical ferment, and many people thought the country was, it was in a pre-revolutionary stage. There are many groups plotting the overthrow of the government, and the Napoleonic Wars had ended five years earlier, but the government kept a lot of the um, repressive legislation on the statute book with a very broad definition of sedition, as in trying to seduce soldiers from their duty or um, to uh, turn people against the government and so on. So freedom of expression was seriously circumscribed at the time. Uh, remember, only about 5% of men had the right to vote. It was a time of considerable economic hardship. The economy had contracted because well, there was trade with mainland Europe, which you might think made, made things easier, but um, obviously so more imports were coming in and sometimes goods were cheaper abroad, so some people were put out of work here and so on. So a lot of protest movements, the March of the Blanketeers and people asking um, the Prince Regent to, to ameliorate the lot of the, of the masses, but he did nothing for their plight. Obviously, then, then George III died in, 18, um, in 1820, but shortly before he died is when this, this, this uh, all took place. So anyway, the blindness and uh, the insanity of the monarch uh, seemed to be a fitting metaphor for the indifference of the establishment to the plight of the masses. Um, so some uh, men decided they would overthrow the government and they uh, caught wind of the cabinet's plan. They were all going to dine one evening in a nearby square. So um, these men armed themselves and you could buy firearms easily, legally, and they were going to burst in on where the uh, cabinet were dining and kill them all. This was to spark off a revolution and they thought they'd, they'd set up some sort of democratic republic. Well, it wasn't to be because uh, the number two in the plot, George Edwards, uh, had um, turned traitor and he was informing the authorities of exactly what was going on. So there were already constables in London, the Bow Street runners. The Metropolitan Police was about to be set up by Sir Robert Peel. Um, so anyway, in February uh, 1820, the stables below and the loft above was raided by the authorities. One officer was shot dead by the conspirators, but um, the um, conspirators were all, were all taken into custody. Some of them refused to uh, testify against uh, their confederates. Um, a couple of them broke and did, and that was that, not just George Edwards, who had actually been, um, uh, you know, giving the, uh, uh, giving the authorities chapter and verse in the whole plot for almost from the word go. But anyway, so they were, they were charged with um, uh, high treason, and indeed they were convicted of treason felony. So five of them were um, executed by hanging, and it was the slow drop in those days, as in they were simply suspended. The drop was only like a foot or two, so not enough to break the neck. So these poor guys strangled over about 20 minutes. It was public execution until 1868, often just outside the walls of the prison. Many soldiers around so they couldn't escape or be rescued, and then the public could see, could see them dance, they say. Their legs are not tied up because you can imagine their hands tied behind their back, the, the twitching, the struggling to hang on to dear life as they gradually went unconscious. Um, and so five of them got that grisly fate. And after they were executed, their bodies were beheaded, which was unique at the time. Why? Just to make sure? Or I suppose their heads were stuck on spikes and displayed somewhere as a warning. This is what you get if you try to overthrow the government by force. And five others suffered a fate worse than death transportation to Australia. So um, that's not just a quip because they put in the prison hulks and it was a, an eight month voyage and it was quite dangerous. You know, you might catch scurvy on the way. They knew about lime juice, the Royal Navy, but they weren't concerned about the welfare of the prisoners uh, we can find in these filthy, dark, um, fetid uh, cabins below deck, seldom seeing the light of day. Boring, uh, boredom was the least of your problems, fighting with the other prisoners. If you fell ill, we're just gonna die and get there and penal servitude when you got there. So having to work as a slave for up to 14 years, unlikely to survive it. But if you did, you were set at liberty in Botany Bay or some other colony, mostly in, in, in New South Wales. So that was that. And um, 
One of these men, one of the conspirators, I can't remember his name, was half black. His father had come from the West Indies. So he's one of the first black people to be politically active in the United Kingdom. And he was one of the men who, got, who was executed. Um, so that was that. Anyway, the street was renamed Horace Street. Uh, many people, Horace, as in the poet, not Horace, um, because many, people, many sightseers came to see it. Thistle uh, Law had been the man, sorry, Thistle would be the officer in charge of arresting them. Not Thistle Wood, as in the guy who owned plantations in Jamaica and kept that very extensive diary copulating with those with the women he held in slavery. A different Thistle Wood. Um, so, uh, th anyway, they, I think the authorities didn't want people to see it and make it a place of pilgrimage for uh, would be um, radicals. So, uh, they don't want their co agitators to get inspired. But in 1937, it renamed it, returned to its, its, its current name, to Cato Street, its historic name. That's enough about the Cato Street conspiracy.